Hey everyone, it's me again, and I'm you say, hi. I'm here to paint a super fast little painting. This is a tiny little canvas. It's only like six by six, and I'm gonna do a little background on it first. I'm gonna take some blue. I'm gonna take some white, some teal. Kind of just do this number with it. Lay this nice little background down. Just so you see what's going on. I like these little chunky canvases. They're fast and easy. They're kind of fun. You can do a series like if you like to do, uh, let's say if I do a hummingbird on this one. And then I decided to do another hummingbird on another one. They're small enough where you can put them together like a little set. I've done that with crabs, or I've done the male and the female blue crab on one, male on one, blue and female on another. And then you end up with a little set. Or you can even, you could do more than that. You could make sections of a bigger painting if you wanted to, and then put them together. But they're kind of nice because they're small, so if you don't have a lot of space in your house, or even if you like live in an RV or wherever, you know, I've sold them to these little paintings to a lot of people just for that reason, is that they don't have a lot of room. So that's one of the reasons why people like these. Once again, I've got to do the bottom here. grab these dogs and pick them right up. There. Don't worry about your handprint. And then you can take some white, make one side lighter than the other if you want. If you hear jingle bells in the background, it's my cat. He feels obligated to help me whenever he can. You know cats, they're such helpful little animals. I'm doing like a little squirrel thing here. This is supposed to be kind of like blue sky. So, just a simple background. Okay. And I like to make a little darker on one side than the other. So I'm going to take a little, I think this is pale and blue. spend a whole lot of time on it. It's a simple, fast foam. There you go. Now you have a nice little background. We're going to let it dry, so we're going to take a break. And then when it dries, we'll come back. Alrighty, I'm back. This little canvas has dried enough where I can do the next step, which is we're going to do a hummingbird. It's a little canvas. Little canvases work good for little things. They don't get much smaller than a hummingbird. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, a hummingbird on. I'm going to do a hummingbird on. Here, Sorry about that. 
do hummingbird on a bottle brush. If you don't know what a bottle brush plant is, they look like a bottle brush. So we're going to take some green, take some brown, so you get kind of an olive color. A little more green in it. Throw a tad of yellow in there just to lighten it up enough to look like a I need a little more green in here. So it gets to be bottle brush leaf color. And no, I'm not working from a photograph. I'm just doing this completely out of my head. I'm trying to make it fast. So we'll see how it comes out. It could be a total disaster. There we go. Bottle brush have kind of long leaves. Kind of come off like this. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to have like a little piece coming off like this because there's going to be a flower coming out here and then maybe another flower here and then maybe another one down here. Okay, so you quickly lay this out. Okay, these are long skinny leaves. to be dark enough to stand out on this canvas, but not so dark that they fly off the canvas. This is kind of a light spot here. This is where a bird's going to be, is right in here. This is a really fast one. I'm trying to make it as fast as I can. Now we're going to do a flower. Flowers are funky on a, whatchamacallit, they are basically red, kind of a bright red. They come out like this, and little flowerettes like this. So you can take your little brush and just kind of do this. And it's pretty red. You can throw a little brown in there if you want to tone it down a little bit so it's not so crazy bright. And if you want to brighten it up a little more, Throw a little yellow in there like this. So you can have different variants of red. Not just straight out of the tube red. But you want to go with a pretty bright red for it to be seen. And you're going to do little brush strokes. And you're going to need to make sure you have enough paint and enough water, that happy mixture where it almost drips but not quite, so that you can do this. And you're going to do a whole bunch of these, kind of doing this number. And they kind of all come off in different directions like a little brush. Because that's why they're called a bottle brush. See, like the little groups like this, like three, three or so. See. You're just going to kind of keep doing this until you have a nice little collection of them. Light touch, people. Don't, no heavy hand. You get heavy hand, you're going to get these big brush strokes. And if you've ever looked at them. And then when you get to the middle, they kind of go up like this. It's kind of hard to do the ones that are, it's easy to do the ones from the sides because they're just going out like, like this, right? But when you get to the middle, they're going to be like this. And all you're going to see is kind of like this, because they're coming out straight towards you. So you're not going to have them as long. And you're going to think, oh god, this doesn't look good. But once you get it down there, it all kind of like this. You have some that are kind of shorter, and they come up in a different direction. And then when you stand back and look at it, you go, oh yeah, it sort of looks like a ball brush. So, they're basically made up of a bunch of tiny little flowerettes all over it. Okay, so they kind of go like this. And just keep doing that until you get the whole thing filled up. And now 
battle, it looks like a battle brush. And when they get on the end, they kind of do an angle like this. Yeah. You want to kind of have some come out at a different angle from different spots so you can't really see the green anymore. You see it there, but it's not really, it's pretty much covered up by all these little flowers coming off. Let's see, and I have too much water, but that's okay because it'll dry. As long as it doesn't run, if it starts to run, then you just get your magic paper towel out and start doing that number with it. So now we have a bottle brush thing. And then you can take up here, there's another one. We're going to kind of have it do this number. This is a little smaller. Basically, just kind of laying it out. Yeah. So they kind of come up and they come in different directions, but all together they kind of look like a little bottle brush. The ones that are facing you, once again, I'm doing that number, so they look more like a blob. Maybe a couple little spikes coming out. So when you get to the point where you can have them come straight out a little bigger down here. Like that. And then the other trick is they have yellow on the ends. So you're going to take some yellow and some white, maybe some of this red you still have on your brush. And you're going to kind of come in and do these little numbers like this, little dots. What those are is the ends pollen is like on the very ends or tips of these little wispy little petals that come out that make up the bottle brush and they're all over it. I, I recommend if you're not familiar with a bottle brush, go on the web, go on your phone, whatever, and look around at the bottle brush. Or even better, if you have one in your yard or you know where there's one, go take a look at it. And you'll see too much, don't freak out like I just did right there, because you can kind of pick it up with your brush and move it. Like so basically, it's just going to look like little spots like that. Now it's a bottle brush. Now we're going to do the hummingbird. Now let's finish the, the leaves real quick. We're going to go back with the green. If it gets too green, you can tone it down with brown or red. We're going to kind of come in here like this. Once again, if you want enough paint that it doesn't, that it covers and enough water so that it flows easily, not so much that it runs off the page. This is a quick painting, it's not supposed to be something you're going to spend all day on. Okay. If you want to, you can. There, let's see. Kind of come up like this. Kind of do this number. Kind of show that it's in there. So you've got some different shades of green. They're kind of a gray-green color. Um, you can throw some aqua in there. Like this. And all of a sudden now, what? It's a kind of a gray-green So this way you have different shades of green. They're not all the same shade. I'm putting and layering different shades this, it's going to make it look like different 
different layers of leaves like they really do. too blue because you can hardly see it. That happens. Just throw some green on it. And then if it's still too green, throw some brown in it. Oh, there we go. See? There we go. Now we go. Now we're good. See, now we got a nice little bottle brush. A couple little flowers. Now we're going to do our little hummingbird. Now I've done, I have drawn probably a million hummingbirds. Well, not a million, maybe 358,000. Okay, maybe not that many. Maybe 300? Maybe. I've done lots of hummingbird t-shirt. Um, hummingbird. Oh, gosh. I, I've, I've looked at a lot of hummingbirds. There are hummingbirds in my yard right now. They're migrating back up. And they come through here. There's a black chin in my, in my yard. And then I've seen some rubies. So we're going to get enough paint on this brush where you want it pretty liquid, but not runny. Once again, don't go crazy loaded up. And don't do the bill first. You're going to do part of the bill. But what we're going to do is this little number. We're going to have the direction of his head going to be like this. And they start out like this. Okay. Like that. Okay. And it's a green. Okay, I'm going with green. And their body shape. I'm going to do kind of a, a, a different shape on him. He's going to come around and then he's going to go like this. Because when they, we watch them fly, and when they, they hover, and they'll stop and back up, then you'll see their little body does this number, and the little wing will come down like this. See? And then you take this little brush, and you just do this number with it. Okay. Just going to taper, taper, and then the wing is actually a pretty fairly wide when it gets back to the body, but since it's up against the body, it's not as noticeable. Okay. There. Okay, so in the back of the, the head, in the back is going to be darker than the belly. The belly is actually really kind of whitish, tannish, and then that's the tail, and they kind of flip like this. tail kind of comes out in a little bit of a fan as he's stopping and then you have this part of the wing It's doing this number, say, like that. And so now composition wise it's not so boring because you see the flower, you see the bird, you see the flower, it's doing this, right? It's not a really intricate painting. And then you have the other wing that's going to be coming up like this. Okay. And it's going to be slightly smaller. So it comes back in here. Okay. You know, you can't really draw how you rich wing moving. I've seen people do it where they just do a blur. And I mean, that's kind of a neat effect, you can do that, because that's what you see when you're watching, because they're moving so fast, but I like to do them kind of frozen in a spot, frozen in time, like this, okay? Take some more green and put it on his back. Okay, and there's a little trick I'm going to do. 
and I've done this before. I have a paint that has some metallic in it. It's a green metallic paint. The sparkles! Okay, and so we're going to mix a little of that sparkle stuff in his back right here. Use it and on the tops of his wings. If you've ever watched one, which I'm sure you have, if you live in the new world, you'll see how they sparkle. And if you know anything about hummingbirds, they only live in the new world. That's North America, Central and South America. If you're from, if you ever see a European hummingbird, okay, it's fake, it's a lie, somebody's yanking your chain. Okay. Boom. So now, ooh, so you can't really see it, but when that dries, that will sparkle a little bit, like a real hummingbird. It's kind of a little trick I do, just to make it a little more interesting. I have this lime green. I'm gonna throw some in here. white and yellow to make the same color. Okay, now their bellies are kind of a buff tannish color. And that's pretty much all of the ones that we see here. There are different, there's lots of different hummingbirds. Central America has zillions in South America, oh my gosh. So, we're going to take this kind of buff color. You're going to start from underneath the chin. Come down over here like this. And you're saying, well, I wanted to make one with a red. I am. Yeah. Don't freak out. But they don't start out that way. There. See? And I'm going to take some more of this tan, put it where his little belly is. chunky belly right here with his little feet going to be right in here. See? Boom, boom, boom. And under his tail, just a little bit. Okay, and now little feet are going to be brown with a little blue. And be very careful when you do the feet. You're not going to see this big old cloth foot hanging out. No, no, no. You're just going to see a very tiny little blob of a toe kind of hanging And now this bill, this is where you're going to be. I don't recommend doing the bill first because most people put way too much paint on their brushes and they go too heavy on the hand and you end up with this bill that should be on a stork instead of a hummingbird. You're just like, oh my god, my hummingbird needs to be this big now to balance out, which your canvas is only that big, so that's not going to work. So now that you're used to the brush and the paint, you got a little better handle on it. Take a lot of brown and a little bit of blue, and you kind of come up with this really nice dark blackish grayish color. And you want it thick enough where you get a good amount of paint, but not super heavy. And you're going to use this little tiny brush, and you're going to start at the end here, right in the middle actually, and then go to the end. This here. And they have this black that kind of goes around their head. Here, right around their eye and up to their eye. It's a ruby. Let's see. And then they have this little spot behind their eye. And it kind of comes down like this. Tail. So the tail is like these dark feathers. Kind of do this. And then we're going to take some of that tan that we like so much. If you don't have tan, just take white and um, kind of shade it a little bit. And if it's too dark, like I think that's too dark, that's too much. Just take some of the tan and paint over it. There we go. And if 
you want to really have something stand out a little more, just take some white. Right here are the tips of his little feet, and then maybe just a little feathers right there. Just like that. Okay, Now, don't freak out if you get too much white and a big blob and he looks like he's dead and his eyes are all glazed over. That's quite all right. You can go over with black, or that'd be not black, but the brown blue mixture when you're done. So, we're now going to do his fabulous red little ruby throat. So, you take some nice bright red and kind of come in here and do it in little dabs. Because that's how their little tiny feathers are. See, you just kind of dab it. This. And just do little dabs. And it kind of comes around like this. Because you want it pretty bright. Because they are really bright. If you like, get some just bright. And on the edges you want it to be, you want see, like that. Now you can go in and tone it down here in a minute. Because it seems too bright. It looks like it's flat. So that lovely little brown mixture you had with your red, you mix with it. So you get kind of a, you can put a little blue in it so it's almost purple. And just kind of dab it in there like this. There, see? You tone it down a little bit on the edge. this little bird. So you take some of this brown and this tan, kind of mix it together so you get kind of a rosy looking color. I'm going to put some down here, kind of a brownish color, and around his feathers down here. Just shade them a little bit, don't get carried away. And then we're going to take some of red, Maybe some white. So we have kind of a pinkish color. And we're going to kind of do some of that on this bottle brush. And what that does is it gives it a little bit of dimension, a little bit of highlight. And some more red there. Bright red there. Because the red that we did earlier was pretty dark. So we're going to brighten it up a little bit kind of compensate for the red in his throat. So he stands out but not like flying off the page. Okay. There we go. Just throw a little more red in here. So it's just a little more interesting. And it balances better with the really red on the bird. See, now you got a little more balance. Now what we're going to do is take some of this lovely green and mix it with some brown. It's a little yellow. Okay. I don't know if you can see it right here. Kind of this blob. You're going to just kind of do this. And we're going to do a few more leaves. Yes. Okay. Just to, once again, to kind of balance it out. Twirl your brush as you do it if you want. You get kind of some neat effects by doing that. Uh, make sure you have enough paint on your brush when you do it or it won't work right. Kind of do this. Like that. There we go. Just a little more interesting. And what you're doing too is you're kind of 
filling this area so you're not, you don't have one side that's way more than the other. And maybe even like a little, I'm looking at it now, let me see something here. Take some red. Maybe there's another flower right in here. Let's see. Maybe the top of one. a little more balanced. I guess it's about done. So, there's your quick little painting. Even little paintings have to have some kind of composition to them. I'm going to add just one more little touch to his eyeball up there. Because to me, it has a little too much white. So I'm going to take this whole blue and brown. Touch it up a little bit. Boom. Now he's done. Now I sign it. And let's go with, I'll go with red. A purpley color. Hopefully I didn't make you fall asleep. Of course, that's the kiss. That's what you wanted, is to fall asleep. Boom! There we go. It's a little tiny ruby throat on a bottle brush. Sykes, I don't know what this is, 6x6, 7x7. It's a little chunky canvas. And you can also paint around the edges if you like to, which is kind of neat on these fat canvases is to continue on the edges on this so when you hang them up they really look kind of neat that way. Alrighty, now it's your turn.